The importance of accounting for curve widening and a vehicle sweep will depend on your project specifics. So usually its importance increases as design standards decrease. That is to say that it is less important on fast wide roads with broad corners and small standard design vehicles than it is on narrow roads with tight corners, large vehicles, and slow design speeds. If it's a project where curve widening isn't required or is negligible, we can just not apply it. Uh, if it's an instance where you want to manually set the curve widening parameters, we can do that. If it's an instance where you'd like the curve widening parameters to be looked up based off of uh, design standards, we can account for that. And then if it's uh, an exceptional condition where you want to do an analysis on specific alignment with a specific vehicle, we can use RoadEng in conjunction with another software such as Transoft's AutoTurn and uh, use both softwares to do that analysis and incorporate the results of one into the other. We'll look at those different solutions and we'll start out with this uh, project that we have open. So I'm just going to turn off our background so it's a little easier to see what we have going on here. So here we have two horizontal curves and I do not have any widening applied. So at either one of these curves in my horizontal curves panel, which is appearing to the right here, I can see the widening number is set to zero. Now if I want to add a widening manually, I can do that. So I'm going to use a large number just so it's really easy to see what we have going on. So let's zoom in, I'll hit apply. So I've applied a widening of 10. We can see that bump out happens inside of our curve. Now that's the widening itself. Another important consideration is how that transitions from uh, the widened portion to the standard width. So in this case I have a transition length and that transition length is set to zero. Now if I set that to be 30 and hit apply, that transition takes place over 30 meters. Now where that transition occurs is also an important consideration. So in this case my transition fraction is set to zero, so that entire transition is happening inside of my turn. So in this case it's all happening before my end of curve and after the beginning of my curve. Now if I change this to one, it's happening entirely outside of my curve. And then if I change this as a to be a value in between 0 and 1, say 0.667, a portion of that transition happens inside and outside. So in this case I have a third of that transition happening inside of my curve and two-thirds of it happening outside. Now oftentimes applying your curve widening manually is uh, would be tedious, especially if you're looking up the appropriate widening from a set of standards. So let's set this to be auto and auto. And we can see here those numbers are adjusted automatically. So I have my transition length set to be 60 and I have my widening set to be 1.3. So we'll hit apply. And that 1.3 is a fairly small number so it's going to be hard to really see that transition just so we can see it. Let's make that more abrupt. So there we can see that little transition for that width right there. So it is taking place. So with that we can cycle through and say well let's add our auto and auto and we can apply that really easily. And if we set our default curve with that auto being set, when we add in new curve, that value is automatically looked up. Let's go with if I go with a 200 meter radius curve in this case I don't need any widening. Now the number that is pulled in in these uh, options here 
can be customized. So if I hit this little plus, it lets me select whether the value is additive or absolute, and it lets me select what table I'm pulling in from. So right now I've got this widening table set here. If I want to use a different widening table, I can click open. And we can change the table that we're referring to. Now in this case, the format is first column is radius, first row is delta, so the change angle. So if I have a change angle of 60 degrees and a 20 meter wide, or radius of 20, two meter widening will be applied. Let's go back here. We can see that that falls outside of requiring widening on this table. Now these tables that we have to pull from, aside from just choosing which table we'd like to use, they're easy to customize and create new. So if I open with Notepad, all this is is a text file and we can continue this table on, add values in to account for whatever curve widening parameters we'd like. We can save that TBL file and reference it. I'm going to go with that one again. And if I want that curve widening table to be applied on new designs by default, if I save my template, save table as normal, the table being referenced will be saved with those settings. So using curve widening tables have some obvious benefits. For starters, they're really fast to use. Uh, they're also dynamic, so depending on the radius you're using and your change angle, you can have that set up to account for a variety of different situations. But they have their limitations as well. So for starters, you actually need curve widening information to populate that table. So oftentimes you can find that information from various standards and pull that in and create your own. But if you don't have access to those standards, or maybe you want to uh, explore a situation beyond the, uh, the standards, so maybe a different design vehicle, maybe tighter corners, uh, etc., you can use the swept path analysis software to uh, figure out those values. So you can set up a variety of example situations with various radii and change angles and check the actual offset of the vehicle and then use those values to create your own table. Now there's other instances where you'll want to use the swept path analysis software and it can be used for uh, exploring individual uh, design situations. So for example if you had somewhere where you can't just uh, widen the road as your standards reflect. It may be that you want to see if, well, if I hug the outside corner with my vehicle, how can I get that vehicle around there? Maybe instead of using an inside widening, you explore some outside widening situations. So if you want to take that detailed look at individual situations, you can use a swept path analysis software. And then another example where that swept path analysis software is useful is if you have really twisty turny roads where your design vehicle doesn't have an opportunity to straighten out and put the uh, front tires in line with the back tires, those curves can have compounding effects. So you can explore those back to back to back curve situations really quickly with swept path analysis software. So let's take a look at uh, an example using the swept path analysis software uh, that AutoTurn offers online and we're going to look at a bridge example where we can't just widen the inside of the road at the actual bridge abutment. So in this case I have my curve widening already applied but the bridge deck itself is narrower than my roadway and I can see that my taper is just coming in and it hasn't quite made it to the uh, the default width. So in this case I can't just widen the road on that bridge deck. The bridge deck is a fixed width. So let's take a more in-depth look here. So I'm going to make one quick change here. So in my template codes, I want to add in my center line. So I'm doing that. 
because if I don't do that, the center line, when I save this as a DWG or DXF, will be split up based off of tangents and curves, whereas the CL code is going to be continuous. So I'm going to hit File, Save As. I'm going to save my change my extension to be DWG. We'll save over that file there. I want my plan, and in this case, my bridge deck is in as a background, so I want to include my background terrains. I'll hit OK. And I am going to go online. I'm going to go onto the auto turn website, log in. I'm going to create a new drawing. So we have an option of select uploading either an image or CAD geometry. In this case, I have CAD geometry. I'm going to select the file I'd like to work with. My drawing is in meters in this case, so that's selected. We'll hit OK. And there we are. So we can see our project. Next step, I'm going to select the vehicle I'd like to do my analysis on. So in this case, I just want to use a standard design WB19 vehicle. You can see we've got several vehicles to pull from. And to start, I'm going to do my analysis on one of the provided lines. So in this case, I'm going to do the simulation as though my vehicle is driving down center line. And in this example, it's a single lane, two-way road. So driving on center line makes sense. I'm going to select the simulation button. I'm going to click the line I'd like. I can choose which direction I want to do the analysis on. And the tracking will vary depending on the direction that the vehicle is traveling. So I'll click to set that alignment. And we can see the path is generated. And with this, we can zoom in on our area of concern, and we can see that there is, in fact, a problem there. Now, we could save this and have multiple simulations in the same drawing if we'd like. In this case, I'm not going to. I'm just going to select that. I'm going to click Delete on my keyboard. And I am going to draw the path that my vehicle travels. So I'll click this little simulation here. I'll click up here, and... We're going to draw this along here. And in this case, I'm going to oversteer. So I'm going to assume I'm going to want a little bit of widening on the outside. And we'll continue through here. Now in this case, I happen to know that there's nothing really to worry about once I get past that bridge. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'll just hit Finish. So we can see that we're making it past that guardrail. But we need a little bit of widening on the outside to make that work. And we'll just put our vehicle in here. And we'll hit Export. And we have that DWG downloaded. So we know we need to widen our road. We could come back in here and we could do it manually. We could either set it as a widening in our Curves panel. Or we could assign widening tab tabularly using overrides. Override our road width left for a specific range. In this case, we have line work. I'm going to use the line work to define where that road goes. So, so 
So I'm opening terrain. I'm going to click insert file. I'm going to navigate to that file that I've just saved. And there we are. Now with this, we could go with that. Now, I would like to only set my reference feature where uh, I'm interacting with the, uh, where I need to be out further than the default setting. I'm going to add in my other line work. So, I want this, I want to give them an additional half a meter. I've selected that feature, modify, buffer, to the left. So I want to break that buffered line based off of my existing road edge. Modify, break, current feature. Actually, so that's the only line that I really care about to deviate from my default settings. So I'm going to select it, invert my selection, click delete. I'll save this as my widening. And then in this design, I'm going to Add a reference terrain. I've got that reference terrain added in as a widening here. So we can see it. So that's in there as a background now. And in my templates, I'm going to define the left side of my road where there is feature to deviate from that three meter width. So we want this to be based off of the widening component, that only feature that's in there. Reference two, we'll hit OK, we'll hit OK, and we'll see that that now follows that reference line. So we are accounting for the width that we need in that case. And if we want to just show the actual analysis that we've done for the sake of illustrating, click insert file. We'll set that there. We'll hit file, save as. And we'll add that in as its own background. So there we are. We can see the path. We've got our design vehicle in that, so we can see that illustrated. And away we go.